friends. This is Sherry, and this is the Real Girl Talk podcast radio show, the podcast for women who want to live an empowered, intentional life. I will be giving you my best tips in business, lifestyle, as well as emotional and spiritual healing, bringing you interesting guests and giving you a weekly dose of inspiration. And I am always committed to keeping it real. Now let's dive in. Welcome back to Real Girl Talk. I'm Sherry. I am your host. And today I'm honored to have Jean Watts. She is a social media influencer, singer songwriter, and she's trading her likes for her mic. Welcome to the show, Jean. I'm so happy to have you. Hi, it's awesome to be here. Thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely beautiful, girl. I mean, when we just started talking, I was thinking, God, is that just like chiseled? Like your jawline is chiseled. Oh, thank you. You have over 720 thousand followers on Instagram. You represent brands like Google and Guess amongst just many of, of brands. And of course, that's really impressive, especially to women that are trying to break into the social media. But I want to talk a little bit about how you started in social media and then tell us what your, how that's transitioned into you really tapping into your purpose, which is singing and songwriting. So I was always doing music since I was little. Um, but another thing, so I was doing music since I was in, you know, third grade choir, blah, blah, blah. I worked with the label when I was 18, when I graduated high school. And then social media started becoming a really big thing. I also love painting. So makeup was actually very easy for me. And I used to post makeup things on MySpace when I was like in middle school. And so by the time like Instagram came around, I would just post my makeup looks. Like I love looking different. I just, I love it. I, I love doing my friend's makeup. I used to do makeup for fashion shows to pay for my studio time. Nice. Um, so then I would just post it. You know, a lot of makeup blogs would be posted and a lot of women would start following me for it. And then I started making this other Instagram page to kind of, cause I love beauty stuff. You know, that's just like, my mom was into it. So I just, it was a major interest for me. Right. So I loved helping women like with the, with the questions or anything that I knew about. Um, but the problem was when I started getting my music ready, people were like, Oh, well, are you a, a makeup artist? Are you a makeup blogger? And I was like, well, no, but I love doing that. You know what I mean? I, I just, I'm very much a girl's girl and I love like helping people out with that. But the right. music industry, it was, it's very hard for people or it's very easy for people to put you in a box. It was frustrating because it's like, okay, so then I got to stop doing this. You know what I mean? I got to stop posting my makeup looks. I can't answer people about that. And that was really frustrating because that was a part of me. But we just kind right. of live in a world where people are very, this is what you do. You know right. what I mean? And so, um, so when my music was getting, you know, when we were working on my music, I was actually going to release a makeup line at one point too, uh, years ago. And I didn't do that for that reason. Um, but I will because I do have the formula and it's amazing. Oh, good. Um, really, really, really hard on it. Um, but music first and um, foremost. Um, but so I stopped posting makeup looks and all of that beauty stuff for over a year. And that was actually difficult because I started losing followers a ton. Mm -hmm. And so, but I was okay with that. And because I knew that, you know, a lot of, what a lot of people need to understand, like when you have a brand or whatever it is that you want to do, like who your audience is. And sometimes like, there is a major difference between followers and fans. True. Because I know a lot of influencers that, or a lot of people have a lot, a lot of um, followers, but like when it comes to selling things or whatever it is their dreams are to be, um, it's hard for them to sell things because their followers aren't turning into fans. You know, so it's very important that people don't get really stuck on the numbers of how many followers that you're getting. Cause someone can have, you know, three times more followers than you and you might have less than, but you can actually probably sell more because you're staying true right. to it. So that would be my biggest like advice for a lot of people in the social media world because it's very hard not to get stuck on the number thing. Right, right. I totally agree. And I know that in some of the um, the business women that, that I've interviewed and some of those that sell products that they may have a smaller amount of followers, but they sell twice as many products oh. as someone that does it because it's really in true of who are actually your fans. Who are those that are buying into what you're selling, whether it's a service, 
or a product. So I totally understand that sometimes 700,000 followers can be misleading if you're actually going for, if you're not posting those looks anymore or saying, you know, this is where you can buy this. This is what you can, you know, you can do this. And so you transitioned, but you, I know that you always enjoyed singing and you did that. So at what point did you transition back into your singing and your songwriting? You know, I, I never wanted to, you know, for me, the reason why I do music is not only just because I love to sing. It's honestly the writing process. I love even writing for other artists. Um, so for me, it wasn't like a lot of people are like, oh, you know, do the voice and do things like that. And I'm like, I love to sing. I love music. But it's the writing process of me like being in the studio and working with these like brilliant people and just creating something from nothing. That was a major like that was the whole reason of why I love doing this. And so when it wasn't when music wasn't ready, it took a really long time. So like people don't realize like, oh, they think I'm just starting this now. You know right. what I mean? They have right. no idea is that this is taking years of just and, and a bigger even bigger thing for my advice to anyone for music or anything that you're doing is that you are only as good as your team is and I've never realized that like I've always tried doing everything myself and I'm very driven and you can be the greatest of anything but you can't do things alone and that took a lot for, that's just a lot of experience for me to realize because the minute I did find the right team which takes a while because it's always trial and error with different people. Right. You, know, you learn what their agendas are or if it's a good match or not, you know. Once I finally found the right team, it's now just a breeze. And it never was like that before. And so that's what people don't see is the back end of the process of any business, really. You know, because I have a lot of friends who are starting different businesses and they're going through the same problems I am as a musician. You know what I mean? And it's right. really be similar because it is a it is a business you know depending on where you want to take it um and that's so true because I think in any industry in so any yeah, industry, it's, yeah. you have to have a good team because you can't be good at everything I mean I know you can start off that way I'm sure you started social media that way doing your own thing but at some point you know it's really hard to keep up with everything you have to do and expect to be the best that you can possibly be at your songwriting and your singing. If you're yeah. trying to do all the posting, if you're trying to do the pictures yourself, if you're, it's just yeah. nearly impossible. You have to have people not just there to support you, but actually have their own talents and gifts to make you shine. And yeah. you know what? That brings me to your video. Your 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 new. So let's talk about your song, okay? So your song "Feel the Shame" is your new single. And you have a new video, music video that comes that's with that. And the video is super cool. Ah, so I know, and, and you know, I'm going to, I'm going to post that for everybody, guys. I'm going to put a link in um, the show notes that you can click on. You can go straight to Jean's video and you can watch that. And so tell me a little bit about that process. I know that it took a big team to do that video and t tell us a little bit about somebody that's interested in singing and songwriting and making music videos and you know, what advice can you give them? Maybe just some, some, a few tips. Tips, my number one tip, which is you hear it all the time, but it's, it's people don't quite realize that it's just keep going. You know what I mean? So for me, like there is in social media or whatever it is, like everyone's trying to make something of themselves, which is amazing. You know what I mean? Right. But it's also like, how do you cut through? You know what I mean? And it's, it's just, it's focusing on yourself. Like a lot of people are focusing on everyone else because that is what social media is. And we're comparing ourselves a lot. And I kind of stopped doing that when I started working on this new project where I was like, not focusing on other people's journey. They were faster than I was because I didn't have a lot of advantages. A lot of other people did and that's okay. And so I kind of just stayed focused. And in my mind, if I was even progressing even a little bit, that was major for me. And so people like really, I love like talking to people about this stuff and I love hyping them up because that's an amazing thing. You know what I mean? Just right. people think that they're just not all the way there yet. That's like, what's the point? And it's right. like, no, it just, it takes such a process. So if you keep going, no matter what it is, eventually something is going to happen but that's the hardest battle because things that are worth it takes time but when things do feel like they're taking a long time it's it's easy to be like I can't do this anymore I'm wasting my right. time I'm wasting money 
you know what I mean? It, it, it's just, it's a lot of that, but right. if I gave up at that time, I wouldn't have had these, this amazing team. I wouldn't have had this, this song. We're about to release a bunch of more music this year and we're about to start doing shows. And I, if I gave up when I was going to give up, this wouldn't have happened. So my right. advice is just to put your head down, stay focused and just keep going because eventually and, and you know happen. what Jean I think everything is at our tips these days I mean we can google a lot on how to get started in whatever industry or purpose or passion or or whatever it is that you want to do and, and I love that you said not to give up because you're preaching a little bit to me today because I know that I preach that, but sometimes we get stuck in our own heads. And I do believe comparison is a confidence killer. Oh, and you, you, say that. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't compare yourself with other people. You know, I had a guest that has her own podcast show and I was like, oh my gosh, girl, you have like 16 million downloads. And she said, yeah, but I started five years ago in my kitchen. You know, and she said, you started in October in your bedroom, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. she said, you can't compare yourself to, you know, you, we started the same way. So give yourself the time that I've given myself. And she's yeah. so right. She is right. And that's why a lot of people like, yeah, it's amazing. Like people don't realize the journey and the hard work that it comes from. Like, and we don't give each, we don't give ourselves enough credit. And I did that for the longest time. I was like, well, if I'm not at the Grammys, then I'm nothing. You know what I mean? Right. And that was my two aspects of life. And I was just like, well, that's a really, really somber place to be because that's, you know, there's somewhere in between that. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something. So I was like, okay. So once I actually, when I started getting like the manager that I have and everyone else, and I actually started enjoying the process and you start living in the moment and just being, just knowing that you're just, we're alive for a few minutes. You know what I mean? Like it's just, right. like, and if you're doing like what you love to do and you're even progressing a little bit, I mean, that's what life's about. And it's like, right. it's like, don't focus so hard on the angle. Like, yes, of course, but make sure that you stay in the moment and really like, like you're reaching so many people and talking to them and influencing them and have such an amazing platform. Like that's massive. Thank you. you. Know I mean? So like, even if it's just a, like for me, even a few people just listen to my music or like it, it makes you happy. I'm doing something that I love to do keep going eventually you know it's it's the love you gotta have the love for what you do to be honest with you you're so right you're so right and so tell us a little bit you said you're starting some shows or you're gonna be doing shows you're in LA right Jean yes yeah okay so what tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you that you're working on and what we can expect to see because I know everybody's gonna want to follow you uh, thank you um so we're about to release the new single um, on the 28th and it's called Evicted. You're actually the first person I said it to. You. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Right here on Real Talk. I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. We just, it just finalized a couple of days ago that we are releasing it on the 28th. I was pushing it so hard for this month because I want to release a song every month, month and a half. Um, and then once I have a few songs out to have a full set, by the end of this year, I want to start doing a small tour and start actually meeting everyone and actually performing and actually having that one-on-one -on -one connection. So, I mean, it's, and plus performing is just something that just in my core was since I was like a little, like I had more, excuse me, balls then <laughs> when, I was, when I was a little girl. I mean, I just, I love this stuff. So that's very exciting for me. And I just can't wait for that moment. That's awesome. So your, your new single releases June the 28th and, yep. and anybody listening to the podcast show. Yes, this is July 3rd. So that means her single has just come out. Oh no, 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 wait. Oh yeah, oh, my last. Video. Yes, yeah, because yeah. we're recording today, so her her song comes out on the twenty eighth of June, which means if you're hearing this today, it's July third, and you can go and check out her single today. Yay. Yeah, that's so exciting. <laughs> that's awesome. So I know that your your video is on YouTube, so you can go to YouTube. Tell tell everybody a little bit about how we can follow your music. You know, how can we hear it? How can we buy it? Yeah, um, on iTunes, um, Spotify, um, I think Tidal, I think most um, streaming platforms have it. iTunes, I think I said iTunes, Apple Music. Um, it's under Gene Watts, and the first single is Feel the Same. Uh, the new one is called Evicted. Um, I also have an Instagram, which is J-E-A-N underscore 
W A T T S. And there's a link in my bio that is a link to all of the platforms that you can click on to listen to. Oh, I'm ex- I'm excited about it, Jean. Now, I also want I want you to tell us just a little bit. Give some of our listeners some mm-hmm. tips, okay? So you let's just we'll just break up a little scenario here, and you have this girl. Let's say she's in her 20s or 30s. You may even have somebody that's older that really wants to break into music. Can they actually do that from wherever they are? Or do they need to go somewhere like Nashville and LA to be able to really be seen? You know what? That's a really, really good question. Because when I, you know, like I said, I was from Chicago and I was doing music, you know, when I was 18. And I remember, um, I remember meeting, it was Miley Cyrus's manager. And he's, um, and he has actually, I knew who he was since I was little because he used to manage Britney Spears. And I'm, and I'm oh, yeah. Yeah, but Britney Spears. So I was like, oh, yeah, I know. Brit- Britney's our Louisiana girl. Ah, yes. So, <laughs> I mean, I growing up, I mean, she was obviously, it's Britney Spears. So I always knew who, like, her label, her manager, everything. So when right. I met him, I was like, yo, it's amazing. And he's like, well, what do you think about moving to California? I'm like, you know what? Chicago's a big city. I think I can do it here. You know what I mean? There's so many talented people. And what he did tell me, he's like, if you want to be in the scene, you got to be in the scene. So I agree to disagree because, well, it was the best decision I ever made moving to LA. I'm not, because of, because you, everyone that's in this industry is here. Right. For the, or Nashville. Nashville is another really big one. New York, of course, but it's mostly Nashville, right. um, Atlanta, depending on what kind of music you're doing. Um, but I met so many people that are great songwriters who are great producers, who are great um, stylists. You know what I mean? If anything that has to do with that world, um, you meet here. And in in Chicago, I kind of had a handful of people that did music that I knew. So there is, but you don't have to. Because like nowadays, because of the streaming and because we are, we have this amazing thing called the internet, is that you can actually do a lot of things at home now. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's all about, and that's the most amazing thing, like right now getting signed to a label. That's not something I want to do. Yeah. Um, I want to keep going, doing what I'm doing, um, just keep building. I don't think I absolutely need to be here in LA for that. Um, it's just in my life I did, but I don't think for other people, they ab- it's like if you're not in LA, then you can't do it, not at all. Because right. you can, there's, there's amazing people that actually – there's new artists that actually got found on SoundCloud or they, they did music at their hometown in their rooms and then they put it out um, on Spotify and SoundCloud and then they got discovered. They get right. discovered that way. So nowadays you, you kind of don't have to. Sorry, I kind of went around in circles with that question, but. No, that's fine. I totally get it. You know, yeah. and, and I know, you know, the new um, American Idol Lane Hardy is, well, actually, he lives about 15 minutes from me, and he's in my son's friend group. And so they have some of the same friends and hang around, and then here he goes and tries out for American Idol and wins. And so, yeah. And so Lane's really, really cute guy, runs in the same group with, with my son's friends. And, you know, it's amazing because, you know, one minute he's graduating from high school and he's singing at some of these Mexican restaurants. And the next thing you know, he's the, the next American Idol. So, yeah, and he did all that from here. Now, granted, he's in LA right now and he's having to do a lot of traveling, but um, I totally get that. I think wherever you are, you can start right where you are. Start, uh, yes. Start yeah. right where you are, use the internet, use the Google for, for whatever it is, for whatever your purpose um, or your passion is. And then in your case, it is, it's singing. And, and you do have that sounding board of your social media. Yes. You know, you do have those followers. So maybe that's the thing, you know, maybe that's, you need to start off there and gain that following, gain those fans because yeah. your true fans are going to follow you, Jean, no matter what you're doing, yeah. you know, they're going to follow you. Um, whether you're writing for someone else or you're singing yourself or perform. Right. I personally can't wait to come see you perform. Like I, 
I will come. You just send me an invite, girl, and I'm on a plane. You hear me? Uh, thank like, you. <laughs> I'll be there. I will be there. I'll I'll grab my daughter and we. Oh yeah, I love you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we will. Let because, me know. I'll get you tickets. <laughs> yes, get me tickets. I am there. I'll I'll take my 18 year old if he can get in the door wherever you are. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll make sure. Of it. <laughs> make sure we just scoot on in because I love your music. I think you have a beautiful voice. I think thank you're very sweet. And I do believe you're going to be blessed and you're going to go a long way. I think if you try stay true to yourself, just like with anybody, stay yeah. true to who you are and put out there really good, positive, inspirational music and yeah. things that people can relate to. Like I could relate to your video. I mean, and I keep going back to the video because I was really, I, I loved it. I really did. The and, and, and I got it. Like I got the whole storyline from the very beginning. And I think a lot of women can relate to what you're saying in that video. And so I totally get it. And I'm excited to listen to your new song. Uh, I really am. You. Yeah. We, I just actually wrote a song yesterday that I'm in love with. And I love the meaning because the message that we are trying in all of my home, my, all my brand, it's, it's, it's actually a lot of women empowerment. It's a lot of like, I love it as women, we, what we go through, if it's vulnerable love stuff, if it's, it's about being sad, if it's about, um, if it's about being in or knowing somebody that's very toxic in your life and how to kind of overcome it, but kind of be uplifting about it and not basking in it because I've been through a lot in my life. Right. And it took me a lot of self-reflection and a lot of self growth and being very, close with God and really just figuring out, okay, this is who you are, not being a product of your life. Right. You know what? I want to do it with music. I want to get that across and just connect with people. See, and I think that's awesome because I do it with writing and speaking and you do it with Yes, music. exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing. As long as you can take whatever pains you have, whatever struggles you've been through, whatever's going on in your life, and it doesn't matter how old you are, we all have it, whether you're in your yeah. teens or you're in your 70s, we all have it. My mom is 77, and she lost you know, my dad last year in July of, after 57 years. So she still has those pains. So she has to figure out how to take that and, and empower other women that have lost you know, yes. husband as well. So no we age all have something. In things. Yeah. It's, it's, we are all living on this planet at this moment. It's all the same. It's the same pain, right? It's the same pain. We all have our own. And I think a lot of things that people don't understand and what I really try to preach really is if you will just take whatever pains you've gone through and share that with someone you will be amazed at the healing that starts coming. You know, the more that I would write, the more that I would share, the more that I talk about the death of my son, the more healing it is for me. And it's the more healing it is for someone else. And if you can write a song and really pour yourself into that song and sing that, and it touched someone where they get it, like I get your music, I got yes. your song, then, you know, it can touch somebody. And that's yeah. your way of doing it. And I think it's so cool. I think it's so cool. I, I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm like fired up to just watch you just flourish ah, to the top. You. And if you go to the Grammys, girl, I'll be there too. We'll, I, we'll have to finagle. I may just have, to have one of those Grammy like party after ones. I might not be getting the Grammys, but you know, I'll, I see I'll die. I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, I'll be I'll be on the B list at one of those parties. Oh no! I'll be like, no, come here. <laughs> yeah, it would be amazing. I think what you're doing is absolutely great, and I thank you. Hope you know that because thank it's, you. And it's true. I, I when uh, Jack was telling me all about it, I was like, sign yes. up. Can't wait oh, to that's you. awesome. I appreciate that. I do. Okay. So we know how to find you on Instagram. We can yeah. go and find your music on YouTube. If we want to watch the video, is that the only place we can see the video? Um, yes. On YouTube. Okay. And then we can actually get your music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple music. Awesome. Yeah. I'm downloading it today. Do you hear me? I'm downloading it today on my phone and I'm going to have, there's a link in the show notes guys where you can click it and you can download Jean's music. You can watch her uh, video there. There's also a link to where you can click on and follow her on social media. Thank you, Jean. Oh, no, thank you. So, so much. 
And I'm just going to take a second, guys, and let you guys know, if you enjoyed this episode and you just have a minute to spare, please go back and leave a review on iTunes. It really helps Real Girl Talk podcast show rank higher, and that way we can become more discoverable for other listeners. And if you have any friends that you think could benefit from this episode or any other episodes of Real Girl Talk, please share it. Together, let's make this world podcast inspired. Yeah. Thanks again, Jean. And you guys, everybody, y'all have a blessed week. I can't be safe, and I don't want to hurt you, but it's a